Hi, Air Signs. Tara here, um, and we're going to uh, do our elemental air reading uh, for June 2018. Um, I cannot believe we are already into the sixth month of 2018. That means it's only six months left to go before we're in 2019, and life is flying by the eyes. I mean, literally. Um, and so, um, this is a general reading. I know a lot of you get tired of hearing me have to do this spiel, but a lot of people don't kind of get it. Um, this is a general reading, and so the messages will not resonate with everyone. Um, in order for you to gain any uh, insight and clarity into your own personal situation requires a personal reading. Um, you can find my email, my website address at the bottom of the screen in the about box section of my channel and underneath the description box of the video. Now, having said that, happy birthday, Gemini Suns. Uh, some of you should be having uh, some things illuminated for you. That's what the sun does. Um, I don't know what else is happening. A lot of other things are happening. I, I don't know. But we're going to go ahead and do a, a short mini cross reading. Um, I've been working a lot. I've, I've got a lot of things on my plate that I'm trying to get accomplished. Uh, that time to the website, getting those 24 videos loaded up for you guys. And I'm also going to throw in another wild card uh, video for you guys. And I've got another astrology video coming. So uh, just kind of bear with me. Um, I'm, I'm trying to add another component to the business. So I hope that, listen, you guys, uh, eclipse season is right around the corner. July, we have an eclipse. Uh, and so if you have not purchased your transit tutorials yet or gotten your charts or anything of that nature, uh, start putting back perhaps a bit of money and preparing to get those. Um, eclipses are game changers and you really don't know how they are going to play out. It could be anywhere from six months to sometimes, you know, three years uh, to six years. An, an eclipse can change things for you. It's nothing to be frightened of, okay? Um, what has just fallen out of the deck is the Six of Cups. Now, that is our focus. This represents the energy of Sun in Scorpio. Um, and this card represents um, that kind of unconditional love that you uh, that we are all able to uh, experience and express. Um, this could be related to childhood. So this could be about a childhood sweetheart. This card is known as most by most tarot card readers as the soulmate card, one of the soulmate cards. But as I like to caution you, soulmate relationships can be very, very difficult. Um, the purpose of a soulmate relationship is for you to come together to complete something from a past life. Um, you've come together to, to finish some business. Uh, sometimes this goes very, very smoothly. It depends upon the conditions and the circumstances under which you parted in a past life. Um, if this is a parting through no fault of your own on both sides, then typically you get an opportunity to come back and finish that story. Um, this card could be about uh, childhood memories. It could be about uh, that nostalgia, that kindness, that sweetness. Um, that love like children have. Um, it could also be speaking about the possibility of maybe people from your past coming back into your life. Okay? So, we got that out of the way. Uh, it is a transformative kind of a thing though. Why? Because of the sign of Scorpio. And we know that Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. And Pluto is all about rebirth and transformation. Okay? Let's get the rest of these cards down. What is crossing this situation? Well, there you are, air signs. 
uh, the Queen of Swords. But she is the card of um, great mental ability, uh, communication and communication skills, getting your message across. Now, we do know that some people have very sharp tongues, but we also know some people who can be very tactful and diplomatic. The qualities of this queen is someone who's going to uh, kind of tell it like it is. Um, she's not going to sugarcoat anything. She can be objective. She can see both sides of uh, a situation. Uh, but she invites you not only to speak your truth, but also invites you to listen to other people's truths. Okay. Um, in her negative aspect, she can be someone who's quite cold and biting, very, very uh, standoffish and reserved. Now, she's known as the divorcee queen. Um, I think that kind of gives the implication that she's a bitter woman. Um, of course, that could be so. But by the same token, it is basically the way I look at it is someone who is able to kind of uh, live their life and. Um, and follow their own pursuits uh, in a very uh, individualistic or um, liberated kind of a manner. Let me put it that way. At the bottom of this, we see arguments. The Five of Swords. Our past influence is the Seven of Cups. At the top, we have the Four of Pentacles. And then we have the high priestess now those of you who've been with me for a while uh the high priestess is first and foremost a highly highly intelligent woman knows a lot of things um can be um and extremely educated okay and this is not always in terms of education in terms of going to college and having a you know lots of degrees and initials after your name this could be someone who spends a lot of time self-educating okay um nevertheless she speaks to someone who may see a lot but don't say a lot okay so these are two different energies here this queen of swords and this high priestess now i have also this is interesting because i have uh, a four a five a six and a seven so it's somewhat sequential but out of order um, and so a lot of times it's not what is here is what is not here. And for some of you, I think that I have seen the high priestess show up as another woman, one that you don't know anything about. This is in there. This is the coming up on, on the future side. So I feel in one respect that some of you are dealing with uh, an issue maybe of child custody. Uh, a separation and or a divorce. I have seen this queen show up as a mediator uh, or a counselor, even a judge, someone who is able to make decisions, hear both sides of the story rationally and then make the best, you know, she's not going to put up with no bullshit, um, but she, she is going to try to be as fair as she possibly can. Um, so I do feel that there is a third party involved in this in some way shape or form and this third party could simply be this queen of swords here uh, who is coming to mediate the circumstances in other words um, the person may has given out a decision um, and told you guys to go back and work it out okay uh, but has her doubts that that's going to happen but this card could also represent you in the foreground as having won a particular battle, some kind of victory. Uh, but it had to be done in a way in which maybe you you question what it is you said, how you said it, whom you said it to, okay? And, and maybe you're having second doubts about that, you know? Because sometimes this card can be uh, the whole idea of winning just for the sake of winning or being right just for the sake of being right, okay? But that ultimately, that type of energy uh, there are no winners in it. So if this is about, uh, because she represents the idea of the moon, okay? And those pomegranates are about being fruitful um, and planting seeds, so to speak. Now, I don't know if maybe some of you want to go to surgery, maybe have some kind of uh, surgery uh, dealing with uh, female issues, 
and, and you've got a whole bunch of choices or a whole bunch of things you're trying to work out in the meantime. Um, I also feel for some of you that you're trying to hang on to something that I don't know if you're hanging on to it from a selfish manner or if you're hanging on to it because it really is something of value to you. Those are the two meanings for me that are coming across. This is what my guides are telling me about this Four of Pentacles. Now, sometimes this Seven of Cups can speak to a lot of confusion, right? Of, of having so much on your plate, you don't even know where to begin. But I ran across an old interpretation of this card that, that also says that it's not just necessarily about confusion or illusion or deception. What it can be about is the idea that you do have a lot of hopes and dreams, but that in order for you to um, achieve those things and to find that emotional fulfillment, you're going to have to distill that down. You're going to have to pick one thing over the other and do it a step at a time. And maybe this Four of Pentacles card is the idea of grounding yourself. Okay. Um, there are two swords, two cups, and a coin. So I do feel that whatever this thing is, it involves either contracts, sales, and or negotiations. Okay. Communications. Uh, there's a highly emotional component to this. There could be finances involved. And most definitely, I think some of you may be waiting to hear some news or some information, something coming through. Your intuition has been, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Has been t pinged, okay? Um, let me see what I can see because I only have this one major arcana card here. Uh, if I can see, I have one, two, three, four pip cards with a queen of swords, a court card crossing this whole situation. So this is kind of like what the block is. So the first thing, I don't have any repeater numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the heart of this, the six of cups. Um, sometimes this could be the idea, because these are really two separate energies. This is air and this is water. And I think that for some of you, you may find yourself in a place where you are really being tasked to get to the truth of what is emotionally viable or fulfilling for you. And how do you go about communicating that? Or should you not say anything at all? I think it's this is a, uh, the idea of, of uh, exploring that inner landscape that you have. Uh, brought about perhaps by the moon. We know that we have this full moon coming. So let me take a look at this Six of Cups next to this High Priestess here to see if it tells me anything. Well, this is a representation of the moon. So I'm going to read that. It is a message that an issue or regrets from the past have not been fully resolved and they may come back to haunt you. There it is. So keep your emotions balanced and remain aware of the emotional lesson of the experience or experiences. It may remain to haunt you until the issue is fully understood and dealt with. Do not fall into that same trap again. It is a time to look realistically at a situation or issue that has not been going to plan as of late to see where you may have misjudged or miscalculated. There it is. Okay, and this is why you're being asked to remain balanced. Now, it also indicates that some concern from the past will come up and suggest that someone feels misunderstood. Well, we see that. <laughs> These cards. Let's look at the Five of Swords to see if the Five of Swords can tell us. We're going to do it just in the order that the cards were given. And then I'm going to take a look, I think, at this high priestess here. I'm not exactly sure what she's trying to tell me. Nothing about the Five of Cups. So now we move to the Seven of Cups. 
with this high priestess. It really is about clearing up some kind of communication, clearing up some issue. That really is what the cards are saying. And, and you're only going to be able to do that through, I think, honest, forthright, and direct communications. Uh, this could even be the idea of you not wanting to admit that perhaps maybe you were wrong about something. Um, it can be very difficult to do that. But I have found in my experience, when I am wrong, I usually will admit it first. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you're just wrong, <laughs> you know, and there's no shame in that. Now. Again, this is a double meaning, this Four of Pentacles next to this High Priestess, because she is the High Priestess, and there's an interpretation for the Four of Pentacles next to that, but she's also a representation of the moon. For some of you, this could be maybe a disagreement with your mom, something from the past that you're dealing with with your mom that has come up, uh, something that may have been clouded or you guys have disagreed about on an emotional level in some way. Four of Pentacles next to the moon is an indication that there may be deceptive undercurrents and hidden things that you are not aware of at this time. Investigate any propositions thoroughly prior to committing to anything and check that all de check all details and ensure you feel 100% positive before commencing. It indicates that there are many undercurrents within a situation and you are to investigate all offers and propositions and do not sign any legal and or binding documents until it is clear and upfront. Remember I said this might be some kind of contractual issue Okay, maybe dealing with separation, divorce, child support. It's the Libra card and she represents contracts, the house of legalities, divorces, marriages, separations, business partnerships, going into business with friends, um, things of that nature. Next to the high priest, it tells of the need, high priestess tells of the need to be absolutely certain of all aspects before committing yourself to anything as there are many hidden undercurrents at this time. You are asked to investigate any and all propositions, but do not, and not as in big letters, sign or commit to anything until you are totally certain. Well, um, I'm going to look at these two cards together. It's, it's two women here, most definitely. Um... One may have the conceptual ideas and this person may have the ability to communicate those ideas. Does that make any sense to you? They're really, really two separate energies. Uh, could not be more different. I'm getting I'm getting the letter L. L and D. The initials L and D. I, I don't know if those mean anything to you. Not B and J or J and B. Although that's a possibility. Um I do feel that there's something that you don't know. See that X underneath the cup? This, it, it reads like some kind of property issue in one respect. Or having something to do with the home, the homeland, or the cultural um, heritage, or the DNA. Could be a DNA issue. That goes back to that medical thing that we're talking about. Now, this is strange. Sospiri, Lamitka, the Vecchia Senora, waiting for your ship to come in. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff happening at this particular moment. We are dealing with a female friend here. But remember, I said it could also be like a mom or an older relative there 
So this really, I think, involves three women, perhaps, or two women. Three women in the sense that this could be some kind of idea of a friendship between the two and you have a relative who's coming in, maybe advising you on something. Uh, there, may, there, there definitely is a lot of, um, I don't want to use the word smoke and mirrors, but that is, my, my guides literally just showed me a smoking mirror, okay? <clears throat> Let's look at this high priestess. There's some kind of mediation that needs to happen here or resolution of some sort, but I don't think you have the whole story. That's what I'm being shown. You don't have the whole story. This could be the idea of somebody coming in and saying, you know, I can do X, Y, and Z. Or you, you pull somebody in because you know that person has the skills of X, Y, and Z. But there's something, it's not nefarious. I just want you to be cautious and to, you might be at a place where you have to make a decision in the next few days about something. Maybe sign some kind of contract, renew some kind of contract. My guides are telling me that if you can stall for the next two or three days, uh, that it will become a bit clearer to you. Not all clear, but for some of you, maybe all clear. Sacerdote. The counselor, trust, uh, somebody you can count on, depend on. But... It's also a single man. But now not only is this a single man, in these days, priests actually, they didn't legally get married, but they did have wives and they had children. They had vices. There were things that they were hidden in the, you know, they're hiding something in the folds. The presente di pietre preziose. The precious presence or a gift not unselfish. And the melancholia the sadness and the depression. So it looks as if there's been a breach of trust or a breach of faith, a promise made in some way, shape or form that does not come to fruition or there's something about it that you don't feel good about. I didn't turn over, definitely. Under the deck is the 10 of cups. So this is, in a sense, some kind of family issue, um, maybe related to children, uh, maybe related to uh, achieving that familial kind of joy and happiness that you've been seeking, but this is what overhangs the entire reading, okay? Now, I'm going to pull a um, an angel answer card on this for you, Air Signs. And that's a changing energy. That's a 10. And so what we know is that 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 means that there's another, there's an ace coming up behind that. There's some new kind of opportunity coming. Uh, and maybe you're going to be required like that queen to use all of your skills, intellectual knowledge and know-how, your tact, your diplomacy to work your way through this. This could even be having to, you know, disappoint a friend or, or a colleague or a business partner that, you know, I can't help you with that. Or it's, it's not a money issue, though. Not really a property issue. It's some kind of property, but it's not really like a money, money issue. Within the next few weeks. I just did that reading uh, dealing with the fortnight change. So in 14 days, when we move into the new moon, within the next few weeks, what you asked about will happen this month or soon thereafter, and your patience is rewarded. That's what it tells you. I hope those messages helped you, air signs. Um, if you'd like to book a reading, again, my website address is in three different places. So until next time, namaste.